Hi everyone, Mark here, welcome to the channel. This video is going to be an introduction to Age of the Storm as a channel and also the subject of Biblical Astro Theology. I'm going to explain pretty much everything you need to know before you dive into some of my longer videos. So what is Astro Theology? Astro Theology is any religion or religious belief which is based on the observation of space. Some of the most well-known examples of Astro Theology that I can give you are the mythologies from ancient Greece or Egypt. You've basically got this belief system where the sun, moon, planets and stars were believed to be gods with varying degrees of power. The sun god usually takes one of the highest and most well-respected positions. So in Greek mythology, the sun god is Helios. In ancient Roman belief, the sun is personified as Sol. And in Egyptian mythology, you have Ra and so on. You've then got all of these planetary and constellational gods forming what you would call a pantheon. So there is hierarchy. Keep that in mind. The attributes and actions of these characters were then based on the movements of their corresponding celestial bodies. So you basically have these entire stories about the lives of these fictional characters. And it was all taken very seriously. These were the religions of the day. Now, why is this important to us? Well, if I strike up a conversation with somebody about Greek mythology, the chances are they will not get offended when I mention the sun god. They know it's fictional. The point in time where people believed in these stories literally has come and gone. They know that these stories are mythological. However, if I strike up a conversation and claim that Jesus never existed, and that he was actually a fictional sun god, you can expect a lot of resistance and hostility. And we obviously don't need to ask why that is. People still believe in the Bible in a literal sense. They have an emotional connection to these characters, and that, in a nutshell, forms the basis of this entire channel. Biblical Astrotheology I provide information and evidence which prove that the various figures and events in the Bible were never real. They were characters and stories based on cycles of time, planetary interactions and alignments with constellations. Just to clarify, to say that the Bible was based on astrology can obviously be very misleading. When we hear the word astrology, we think of predictions and psychic readings. So who will I marry? Will I win the lottery? This is obviously very different from what we are talking about here. When it comes to the origins of the Bible, astrology in this sense starts with the knowledge that the celestial bodies can affect life on Earth. So we're talking about predicting the times of harvest, navigation, controlling the tides, and the way that life changes as we cycle through the seasons. Knowing how much influence the sun moon, planets and stars have over our life led primitive humans to worship these celestial bodies as gods. The obvious question that you might ask off the back of that is, why do I feel it's important or even necessary to share this information? Well, there are a couple of reasons. Firstly, a lot of people base their entire lives around these beliefs as historical fact. They're conditioned to blindly follow what they're being taught by tradition rather than understanding the original context. And if they ask for proof, what would be the usual answer? You just need to have faith in everything that you're being told. You could argue that religion brings people a lot of support and comfort. But think of it this way. If your idea of support means manipulating someone into believing mythological stories as historical facts, quite often when that person is already in a vulnerable state. To me, that is unforgivable. So does this mean that I'm calling out every priest and church pastor for being evil and manipulative? No, not at all. Quite the opposite, to be honest. We're at that point in time now where they are just as blind to the truth as anyone else. There's nobody better to brainwash people than somebody who's already been brainwashed themselves. So does that now mean that I'm trying to turn people away from their religions? Also, no. With Age of the Storm, I'm approaching this from an entirely different angle. I provide the information and connections between the biblical stories and their mythological origins. While it might look to some people 
like I'm trying to attack their faith. This is actually very far from the truth. I personally believe that nobody in the world should make any important decision without first having all the relevant information to hand. Think of it this way, and this is obviously oversimplified. Somebody close to you wants to take out an insurance policy. This could be your brother, your sister, or maybe your parents. This particular insurance plan that they've chosen promises to pay out £100,000 when the time finally comes. All they ask is that you commit to the plan on a daily or weekly basis. Up to now, it sounds straightforward, right? Now let's just imagine for a minute that this policy is actually a scam. They do eventually pay out 100000 but it's all in Monopoly money. They were lying, but they were manipulating you into thinking that the fake money was actually real. Now, as another twist in the story, let's say you have a very close friend who is fully aware that this policy is very misleading. They know that certain wording in the contracts is a clear giveaway that the company is a scam. My question to you is, would you want that person to be honest with your family member before they commit to the policy? Of course you would. If the person then chooses to go ahead with the plan, knowing all the risks, at least they've had access to all the relevant information. And that's one of the biggest reasons that I do this, to give people the broader picture. The other side of that same coin is how the manipulation of these ancient texts has affected those who are in power. Initially, yes, going back many thousands of years, people would have looked at what's going on in the skies and believed that this was some kind of heavenly realm. You have the five visible planets plus the sun and moon, which were all considered to be living spiritual beings. And it's obvious why primitive humans held this belief. These celestial bodies moved independently of everything else. Therefore, they must be alive. They live in a place which is not accessible to humans, and they control many of the elements of nature here on Earth. As time went on, elaborate stories were built around the movements and interactions of the celestial bodies, and these various texts were then eventually compiled into what we know as the Bible. After the invisible creator, the sun was held in the highest regard because of its positive effects on earthly life. The moon was known to be a reflection of the sun, as you can see from the Wisdom of Solomon 726. The moon is the Holy Spirit, also identified as wisdom. Now, I'm sure that everybody has come across this quote before. On earth, as it is in heaven. But what does that really mean? The most common view of heaven in the present day is paradise. It's a place where there's no suffering and negativity. However, the original meaning behind this is somewhat disturbing. On earth as it is in heaven can also be understood like this. As above, so below. This was not talking about paradise. This was talking about hierarchy. When these ancient cultures observed what was going on in the sky, they did not just see these bright lights moving chaotically. They actually had strict cycles and fixed paths. Some of these lights were bigger and more powerful, and therefore held in a higher position to the others. One of them had to be in charge. This is the original meaning behind the phrase, on earth as it is in heaven. Certain groups saw this hierarchy in heaven and copied the structure here on earth, placing themselves in charge. So you would have the king and queen at the top, followed by their royal court, and eventually you get to us, the average citizen. And here's the important part, so make sure you catch this. It was a common belief throughout many ancient cultures that their king or ruler was genetically related to the deity. As an example, look at the word Anunnaki from ancient Babylonian religions. This is the name given to a group of their deities. Translated, it means royal offspring or princely seed. The name Anunnaki was also applied to human kings to make people believe that they were the genetic offspring of these mythological beings. If you look back through the royal bloodlines of many cultures from around the world, 
You will find a point in time which is usually very well hidden where the list of historical royal descendants flows smoothly into a list of fictional kings and gods. That's how many of these rulers in ancient times came into power and why their bloodlines are so important to their descendants even today. What's just as concerning is something called divine right. Royalty were granted special privileges. They were untouchable. They could commit the worst acts of violence and nobody could do a thing about it because they were related to the gods. I'm sure I don't need to tell you this, but the whole divine right thing carries over, even into the present day. So with all that information taken in, the natural response from any open-minded person would be, well, okay, we're going to need proof. And that's where Age of the Storm is also different. I'm not just going to expect you to have blind faith in everything that I'm saying. Think of it this way. If I show you one connection, then that could just be by chance. If I show you two connections, then it could be a coincidence. Three connections or more, and you have a very obvious and clear pattern. Many of my videos contain far more than three connections, as you'll soon find out. For instance, it is definitely no coincidence that every element of Jesus' life correspond to a position or alignment of the sun. Every single one. Now, when it comes to content on this channel, I have two main video types. Firstly, my full-length videos are usually based on a broad area of the Bible. So, for example, the flood narrative or the biblical account of creation. My Q&A series is a chance for viewers to ask any and all questions that you might have. I do also have a Facebook group appropriately called the Red Pill of the Bible. Again, this describes biblical astrotheology as a whole. The blue pill represents blissful ignorance and being content with the official stories and religious traditions. The red pill is a willingness to open your mind to the disturbing truth that our current and traditional understanding of the Bible is based on deception, manipulation and lies. Of course, we don't just take the biblical stories and characters at face value here on the channel. We dig right down into the Hebrew and Greek languages to understand the intended meanings of the text. We also look at books which are not considered to be part of the Bible, those which form what we know as the Apocrypha and Pseudepigrapha. So that's basically a very well-rounded overview of what this channel is about. I'm also going to link to all of the content from my main two series, down below in the description for you to get started with. To begin with, I would recommend watching The Birth of the Sun and The Celestial Flood Narrative. So thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more content. In the way of support, the best things that I can ask for are likes and comments. This allows me to see that I'm on the right track with the types of videos that you all want to see. If you have any questions for the Q&A series, feel free to get in touch either in the comments through our Facebook group or via email, all linked below. Sharing the content from this channel is unbelievably valuable to me. It gets the information out there to people who need to hear it. Whether that means sharing to a Facebook group which deals with similar subjects, or even to that one person that you know on a personal level who will benefit from hearing the truth. Again, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video.